From this morning's gospel reading from John 3, we begin at verse 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, do you have any physical features that you may have inherited from your parents or your grandparents? These may be physical features such as hair color or eye color, height or body type. They can be mannerisms or phrases you use or the way you say things. I have my daddy's height and body build along with my mother's color of hair and eyes, for instance. I also have a distinctive nose and I got a beer gut no matter how much or how little weight I carry. My wife has her family's traits and our children have aspects of both red or reddish brown and blonde hair from the Hirtons, short stature and stubbornness from the Ramey side. You know, just last week, our number three daughter regaled us with a story about our granddaughter, Olivia, who at age three scolded older kids who had accidentally knocked her older brother down. With hand on hip and finger wagon, she was a carbon copy of her great-grandmother, a spitting image of my mom. Those physical traits or mannerisms indicate to whom we belong. I once met a man who had worked with my father, and before I could even introduce myself, he said, you must belong to J.W., you look just like him. Well, perhaps you've had similar experiences. This gospel reading for today has a verse in it that talks about belonging. It goes like this. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. It would seem that our belonging to God is something that goes beyond skin deep, that it's much deeper than that. Now, often when we hear the word Pharisee, we automatically think of those who openly and actively oppose Jesus during his ministry on earth. Along with the scribes, this religious party lived up to what their name meant in the Semitic language, the separated ones. They were religious types committed to living an honorable and very public life marked by a rigorous religiosity. Their lifestyle made the most fervent Bible thumper look tame in comparison. Now most of us have a disapproving attitude about the Pharisees based upon their actions as generally portrayed in the Gospels. But some of them earnestly sought to walk with God and one such Pharisee was a man named Nicodemus who came to Jesus one evening with this personal observation. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus, now let's have a little fun with him. Let's call him Nick at night. Was not just any old Pharisee. He was a ruler of the Jews a member of the Sanhedrin, an elder of the people, which meant he would be very knowledgeable about the Old Testament scriptures. And based on that, he was led to see in Jesus a very special person. So it's as if he were saying, Jesus, you belong to God the Father. I can see him in you. Where the other religious types looked at Jesus with scorn and contempt, Nick at night saw him with a heart 
that longed for God. Deep down, he knew who Jesus was. He had his father's eyes. He had his father's spirit. Now Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. While much has been said about this being born again, Jesus is speaking of what it means to belong to God. It requires a new life, a new way of seeing things for a person to be able to comprehend the kingdom of God. Now from the Pharisees' perspective, they saw the matter of truly belonging to God as a matter of living according to their rules and rituals and regulations, earning won a spot in heaven. In all their rules, regulations, and rituals, these religious types missed the point, which is demonstrated by Nicodemus' response. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? He didn't get it. Being born again isn't something we can do for ourselves. It's something that happens to us. You know, you and I are the product of our parents to whom God gave us life and breath. We didn't have anything to do with it. We're just the happy outcome. Nick's question revolves around what a person has to do to be born again. It's as if it were up to us. But Jesus' reply makes it clear it does not. Truly, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. You see, where Nicodemus saw the kingdom of God as a result of one's obedience and religious works, Jesus speaks of the kingdom being created in men and occupied by those who are of the faith, not of works. That's exactly what Paul is getting at in today's epistle reading from Romans 4, when he writes, for the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be the heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but there is no law where there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shared the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. We belong to God, not because somehow we chose him. We belong to God because he gives us new life in the spirit in our baptism, where we are born of water, in the spirit. Luther in his small catechism rightly applies God's word to this matter as he answers the question, how can water do such great things? To which he writes, certainly not just water, but the word of God in and with the water does these things, along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism. That is a life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. And when Jesus talks about blowing wind in the spirit, he's pointing out to this leader among the Jews that there are things that are simply beyond our understanding and control. Everyone who is born of the spirit 
cannot fully understand how God in his wisdom sends the Holy Spirit. They just know that he does. Now while Nicodemus is struggling to try to wrap his brain around all this, Jesus moves past the how in order to get to the matter of the why. He says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now this is a reference to an event that happened during the exodus of Israel. It would be something that Nick should be mindful of from Israel's history, from the book of Numbers. In chapter 21, we're told, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. And so Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look to the bronze serpent and live. Well, similarly, the Son of Man is lifted up on the cross so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now, here is the big why of God in giving us new life in the Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Well, did Nicodemus ever grab what Jesus was trying to get at? You know, we don't hear anything more about him in this chapter. But we do see him pop back up following Jesus' death on the cross, way down in chapter 19. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 70 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Evidently, the Spirit was at work that night. Born of the Spirit, we belong to God by our new birth and baptism, with a new life which the Spirit brings to us in faith. So, may we live in that same Spirit, that our words and our deeds, when seen by people, and heard by people, might cause them to turn to us, look us in the eye and say, you have your Father's eyes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We